the biggest Bitcoin beginners blunder that you can make, but you can also make this if you're a veteran in crypto. It just takes one minor slip. That's what we're talking about in today's video, plus some easy steps to avoid this mistake and how you can stay crypto safe coming up in the future. Let's dive into it. My name is Jason Pizzino. Welcome back to my channel where we talk about everything that optimizes your wealth. So what you've all come here for, what is the biggest mistake? And it is so simple. I'm just going to throw it out to you early in the video and then go through and explain how we can avoid it later on in the video. So it's really simple. When you're making bank transfers to your cryptocurrency wallet or exchange, do not use the word cryptocurrency, crypto, Bitcoin, or anything crypto or Bitcoin related. Reason being is that the banks are not liking cryptocurrency. We know this already, and I know you may already know this, which is why I'm adding in some extra information further in the video. But of course, if you don't know this, then it's always great information to learn now so that you don't run into troubles later on. In addition to not naming your reference after Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, don't name a company or anything like that after Bitcoin or cryptocurrency. I've seen this firsthand with a bank, a company that was called BTC PTY LTD, which in Australia is proprietary limited, just like your LLCs in the US. This company had a bank account with one of the major Australian banks. And as cryptocurrency became more popular, the banks were looking through their list of anything that is related to Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, and they shut down this account. Now, it wasn't trading Bitcoin, it wasn't doing anything like that, but the name on the account was BTC. And anything that was related to that account also got shut down. So the directors of that company, the BTC PTY LTD, whatever else they had with that bank was also shut down. So their accounts were just shut because of that reason. So although it's a really simple thing, like don't put the references cryptocurrency or Bitcoin, you can see that it can relate to many other areas between the banking industry and crypto. And that's obviously what we want to avoid. We want to have easy access in and out of crypto and the banks aren't liking this. So be aware of that. Let me jump into what we can do to avoid that. Now, obviously reference, you don't have to have a reference, but if you need to have a reference, maybe make up some sort of code name for it that reminds you of it being crypto, but don't make it anything in regards to crypto. That's the first easy thing to do. Now, if you've got companies and you want to call it something to do with crypto, just don't because you don't want to come later down the track, say, you know, a year or two from now, we're in a Bitcoin, a bull market, a crypto, altcoin season, whatever's going on. And the banks start to look more at who is on their books and they see a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency company and they just decide to close it down because of crypto terrorism or something ridiculous like that, which we've seen before the government make up and the banks go along with it because obviously they don't want to see more money go into a different system, which they don't control. At least that's my point of view in the whole system. Maybe if you need a nickname that you can remember, maybe call it XRP or Ripple. We know that the banks love Ripple. That was a joke, by the way, don't call it Ripple. An easy two-step process to this is set up with an exchange that you know and trust that actually understands this problem between the banking system and their exchange. One in particular is independent reserve. You can check the description down below for the referral link. You'll get 15 bucks if you sign up for that. I'll read to you what they posted on their website. Now, it is titled Advice on Making Fiat Currency Deposits. It has come to our attention that Australian banks are often wary of their customers making investments in cryptocurrencies. Whilst this is an unfortunate and dubious concern, it is a reality and something that we need to stay abreast of. As a consequence, we would like to advise all of our customers to never explicitly use the word Bitcoin or other cryptocurrency related terms in any transaction description entered on a deposit made from your bank, as this is likely to draw unwanted attention and may result in unexpected bank account closures. So this came off the website of Independent Reserve. I like this that they are in the know and they are aware that these things can happen, which is why I you know, can trust them a little bit more. We, we can't trust anyone exactly 100%. But, you know, I like to look at this and that's just my opinion. You've got to make up your own mind in that case. So we're on an exchange. We've got some money into there. We're buying ourselves some major cryptocurrencies, which is what is listed on independent reserve. The other crypto wallet or exchange that you can use is crypto.com. So their ticker is CRO. I'll refer to them as CRO. 
Now with those guys, they have a crypto debit card that you can use. They also have interest on crypto, so you can earn interest on cryptos which you stake on their platform. Kind of works like term deposits with a bank. All you need to do with that is get yourself an account set up. Again, I've got links in the description down below for that. You also get 50 US dollars for free when you sign up buy 50 MCO, which is another one of their tokens, and stake that in their wallet. That gives you access to higher paying interest on cryptos. It also gives you access to better reward cards and plenty of other features on there, which I've listed in many videos before. One last new thing for crypto.com, CRO, is that they have a decentralized wallet. I think this is huge news for them. I find that absolutely amazing that a centralized company has been able to start to transition to a decentralized product as well. So they can offer both and they are meeting both market needs. Uh, for me, I think that is a major step forward for a cryptocurrency project. We know companies like Binance are doing this as well, but MCO, CRO, crypto.com, just seems like an easier way to get in and be a part of that action if you like what they are doing. So that is my two stages to the process of getting in to avoid any of these issues in the future. Don't use cryptocurrency related terms when you are putting deposits into cryptocurrency exchanges. And then next is get yourself as much as you feel you can comfortably invest into the investment products that you want. I'm not a financial advisor, so don't take this as advice. This is just the way I would play it. I would get as much as I can in and then transfer it out of those exchanges just in case anything happens between the Australian government, the Australian tax office, the cryptocurrency exchanges which are listed in Australia or your chosen country and get that out so that you can actually earn some money on those and possibly the accounts don't get frozen anywhere in the future. It hasn't happened but I just wanna be on the safe side with that. So if you've done all of these steps above, the last thing I would look at doing is ensuring my cryptocurrency is safe from theft. Now, if you're leaving the coins on a centralized exchange like CRO, not their decentralized wallet, but on their exchange or in that mobile app so you can earn interest on the crypto, then yes, you can't make it as safe as transferring the crypto to a decentralized wallet like any other cold wallet storage like a Ledger or Trezor, which I also, Yes, have a link, an affiliate link to purchase Ledger in the description down below. That is the safest process that I can think of at this point. I'd love to hear your thoughts on your system of how to get in safe, how to store it safely, and then make as much return as you can on the cryptos which are just sitting idle in your wallets. Just a nice quick one for today. So basically wrapping that up is don't use a description relating to cryptocurrency when you're transferring money from your bank into your cryptocurrency exchange or wallet. Guys, if you enjoyed that video, I'd appreciate a like down below, hit the subscribe. I know some of you are watching this that haven't subscribed already. Plenty more videos coming up on cryptocurrency and how to optimize your wealth. If you wanna stay in touch with me after these videos, be sure to leave a comment down below. And today's question, have you been a victim of this beginner mistake? Have you used cryptocurrency related words in a reference for your transaction from your bank? to your cryptocurrency wallet or exchange. Thanks again for joining me for another video. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook where I keep in contact with you on the daily. But until next time, have more fun to get more done.